Good evening. This is the Virginia Beach Public Library presentation of an art exhibit and meet the artist event featuring Jalisa Yates. And I'm your host, Sandy Hopkins, adult services librarian for the Virginia Beach Public Library. And also uh, co-hosting is Robert Kennedy. He's the volunteer art gallery coordinator for the Central Library in Virginia Beach. Um, Robert, would you introduce the artist for us, please, and give a little background? I'm happy to do so, Sandy. Thanks very much. And thanks to all for joining us tonight. Jaleesa Yates is a freelance artist and digital painter who graduated from Virginia Wesleyan University in May 2019. During her college years, she was involved with art organizations and events, reflecting her commitment to the importance of expressing and sharing artistic creativity with the public. For example, in 2017, she oversaw the installation of paintings from her public art course in a new apartment building organized by the Virginia Supportive Housing, which is dedicated to ending homelessness. Jaleesa has two murals on public display, one in Norfolk's Neon District and one in Virginia Beach's Vibe District. Jaleesa focuses on rendering realistic portraits in various art styles using the Clip Studio Paint Pro with Wacom Intuos software which allows the layering of different brush strokes and textures. Inspired by her imagination and dreamlike fantasy, her skillful work highlights the diversity of human faces. She finds the creative process of rendering the details of facial anatomy and skin texture through close observation to be both challenging and intriguing. Thanks very much for joining us this evening, Jaleesa. Thank you uh, for having me as one of the artists uh, for this library. Uh, before I go ahead, um, I have an email contact. Uh, if you're anyone interested in, send me a message or as well a request uh, for a commission. Um, also, I have a website and an Instagram as a social media where I post uh, my artwork or uh, creative process. And I have an Etsy shop, it's digital painting, um, just mostly for a commission. I don't have prints to sell. I have three series that, that I would like to introduce. Uh, first is Virginia Wesleyan University Senior Art Exhibition that was done in 2019. This is where I have made you no know, personal works to that will be shown for the exhibition and um, most of them are on digital and hand-drawn illustration focused on portraits. So um, the personal works is the ones I have done for a year or at least two years and you know creating things relate to my imagination or relates to my inspiration from fantasy and science fiction. And the next, the last series is photo and portrait studies. Um, these are studies more like experiments and uh, practices or research on understanding the facial anatomy, um, the lightning, lightning on the face, like where, where I can understand where the light source is from. Um, you know, so many things like ask questions about so just to clarify them that these are not like original works, but because I use uh, photo references made by someone other than myself, and I will have the names of the models and photographers on the slide, so you can look over them, you know, to see why or how I'm inspired by their original photos. I don't plan on selling any of them. But just to show, you know, my skills, I can pinpoint where my struggles or my achievements. So throughout all three of the series, I would like to show you how my style have changed through time. I switch one software to another, um, and also I upgrade digital tools and explore the compatibilities in using the software like the features that they have in the software that's very different from you know being an artist working with traditional media 
So this is Joe that I made on Photoshop. And I have a creative process that were put together in, in a GIF animation um, for anyone interested in how I work around and building out portraits and through layering and um, well, as well as layering, but using separate layers that help, you know, if I can go back and forth or I can duplicate it, like copy paste, but duplicate it and then add more details along the way. So uh, for the senior art exhibition, I'd like to share the process of, you know, the very first step is to photograph the models with the permission by photograph them in a light studio room, like where photographers would use and use the equipments like the uh, the light bulb would be on one side of the, the face or behind. You know, I take multiple pictures of them and I choose one, whether do I want to replicate this, uh, the likeness of the model face and the pose and their facial expression. So throughout that, after I finish with the final result, I put together the animation and the next and the final next last step is to print out the illustration on Canvas 20 by 20 and have it installed at the exhibition. Professor Rudolph. Uh, the reason why I decided to photograph people I know on campus um, just to, you know, to have that kind of experience in using the, my own references and know how to do things on my own. And um, as well as have like facial perception, like um, using the colors for what I, what I see on the subject matters. Uh, facial expression or would it be something that I know about this person, like what's their favorite color and so forth. Zachary. Um, also during the process in photographing the models, I always um, change the the position of the light source, or I ask the person to, you know, change their pose by looking at some way, you know, don't have to look directly at the camera. Also, there's an artist that I was inspired by uh, named Lambert Van Mien because, uh, you know, he makes realistic portraits and uh, knows how one side of the face are light and while the other side is dark and there's like a triangle of light on the cheek. So it's where I'm like, you know, I want to replicate that or adapt that kind of art style. Ashley. Um, the choice of color like orange would be representation of this person's personality or as well as the texture of the hair, um, the texture in the background. You know, I always try to explore the paint brushes from the software and, you know, take advantage of that similar, similar thing as on the face. Um, most of them are blending or most of them are just layer on top of each other. Next year. And this is similar, similar as to like brushes, brush strokes and the texture, just keep on adding to another, another. And um, sometimes I use highlights, um, just the very end or I use highlights on somewhere in the middle where the layers I'm looking at the animation and sometimes it looks like about 20 layers, but there are more of it, like at least 50, um, because there's sometimes I have trial and errors where I need to restart 
or I need to make some changes or like, you know, in the software, like in Photoshop, it's very unlimited because you can continue the process process or delete the layer without wasting any space. So that's where I just want to get comfortable making new layers. As for that means, Professor Bill Horn. So I, uh, just, when you can see from there, is, uh, I use the light source um, on the side of the face and have the shadow away from, you know, create a shadow. Um, the reason why I use grayscale for this rather than full color, because when I photographed the models, they were in full color. I am not trying to manipulate in a way because I'm only focused on using the high observation and pinpoint of where the shadow is, like clear scale and so forth. Next one is uh, for the personal works. Uh, this is a little abstract number two that I did on Clip Studio Pay. And as you can see, I have a lot of use of texture, like pencil and paint as of like relations to like acrylic paint, but specifically all of them are on digital. So I just want to practice and play around. And this is the replica of the first one I made, um, blue abstract for the first one I made in 2016 or 17. Um, this is where I tried to, you know, create a character and having like a cartoon and, you know, play with the face. Next one is bubble gum. This one I really have, I enjoyed this piece because of where, you know, there's this feature on the software that you can flip the canvas or, you know, digitally the page of the work, you can flip it uh, horizontally or vertically and make some changes, or you can copy paste or duplicate the the image and then put place it on top or you know have placement anywhere on the page and um, we play around with the background like the stars are answering from the brush not that I have to you know signally handling the stars or I can use different brushes for the clouds and the background also there's a layer features on the layers that you can, you know, affect the colors. There's multiple colors. All these were in grayscale at first, and then you have a layer on a color layer on top of it. So that's where I decided, you know, let's play around with it. Lava Boy, um, this one, I was inspired by Lava Lamp, and I thought of when I went and looked for a reference image, and you know, when I seen the reference image, but there, it don't even look like that at first because I decided to, you know, add something, you know, as soon as the person looking up. So I thought, you know, this is could be like the little uh, blob of shapes that I seen from lava lava lamp and apply that as a like an imagery like fantasy. You know, either be a storytelling or either be of something that I wanted to duplicate or storytelling. Mountain. This is where I uh, decided to use my own reference um, to create a character and mountain as a sense of like height or a sense of using the brush strokes to make clouds. Satisfy X Fantasy. Um, this one is my favorite because of doing a double portrait where I focus on one in, one portrait at the bottom and then I can flip and focus on the portrait from the top. And the top character, I use my self portrait as a reference and knowing the fact that I'm a recipient of cochlear implants. 
So this is where I thought of, you know, this is where I can be showing about diversity in genres like fantasy and science fiction, but also to, you know, like I said, have fun with it. But also this one is like a replica of the old work that I made uh, traditionally, like um, color pencil and watercolor. So I just thought, you know, maybe I can try have a first, you know, digital painted version of it and explore where I can make it look good or I can explore the tools by like using the ruler as to how the lines are very straight and so forth. Monarch Butterfly. Um, that's why I made it earlier 2020. Again, using self portrait as a reference and using the facial expression or the pose. And I thought, you know, looking at the original photo, I was thinking, what is that I can add in um, for the person to look up? And I include butterflies, uh, monarch butterflies, you know, you know, my favorite, but they're beautiful in a way. So I, in order to reduce time, um, you know, this is a symmetrical ruler that while I hand on on one side of the ruler, the other side decided to copy or be copy um, as long as the way I hand draw them. Um, I use pen and tablet, similar as to like you draw on a paper with a pencil or a pen, but pen and tablet, as long as it's connected to this computer or any device that you have and you have the software, this illustration can work just very few materials. Miss Universe, again, self portrait, but make it a little bit more different or more of a storytelling. You know, I was inspired by um, Disney movies, I was inspired by um, you know, the concept of space and universe. And I thought of, you know, create myself as a character, as a celestial being that's been uh, seen by an astronaut um, creating this full body for this character. is difficult because I have to look for references for it, but the software Clip Studio Paint gave me the, the opportunity that I could use 3D model and change the pose of the for the character and you know move the body uh, the legs and the arms so I can copy and draw from from the photo or draw from that reference. Anything can be possible on your own. This is the even though it's not necessarily uh, a personal work because there's the models that I did not photograph them myself so these the names of the models right there but to me this one feels personal to me because i'm really really happy with this i'm getting more confident on um, making illustration somewhere like that and i have a creative process for me to watch where i have layers of you know I decide, you know, take a different approach where I can do a separate layer, one layer for the highlight layer for the shadow layer for, you know, any details and um, as well as the line work. And I'm really happy with this one. So just figure out that the more I do do this, or the more I'm comfortable in creating realistic portraits then I can do this later on. Next one, um, moving on to the next series is portrait studies. Um, again, these are more like practices um, where I try to learn how to do uh, replicate or like render the person's model, like likeness of the models, the facial features, and um, but the very first thing I do is just focus on grayscale, not 
try to do anything about full color because that would be for later years. So again, this is the there's a model, the name of the model and the photographer. Um, for this one, I um, did a Photoshop, usually my, I say my comfort zone um, is always just grayscale, um, the background to be, you know, just a lot of a texture, like cloud. Um, I choose whatever photo references I find on Pinterest or Instagram just for inspiration, uh, but I always make sure to look up who is the photographer of the original photo and their social media. The self-portrait dating uh, on Clip Studio paint like a very first um, first trial or first try on um, using the Clip Studio paint as a another software like a trans transition from Photoshop to Clip Studio Paint. And I thought, you know, uh, use my old self-portrait as a reference and play around with it. Um, portrait study of Boyd Alvis. Um, this is where I decided to practice on cross hatching and focus on where the shadow is or focus on like three-dimensional uh, uh, perspective on the person's face. Uh, even though it don't seem very completed, but at least you know what you're looking at, like the focus on the person's face. Poetry study of Stefano Sanchez. This is where I decided to take another approach uh, other than just using the pencils, uh, the same texture of the brush and move on to another, uh, or at least use multiple uh, texture of the pencils and paint um, to just to explore, you know, where I can just fill in the shape uh, inside the outline or to just doing a separate layer for the shadow and for the light and you can compress the all the layers into one image. As you can see the hair and the beard is that is from the pencil brush on the software because I can uh, make it bigger. I can change the size of it. I can change the opacity. I can change, you know, certain ways uh, to make it easier for me rather than try to fill it in. That would take a longer time. But I really enjoy experiment with the paint brushes and using uh, whatever there is there because the software is very unlimited. Um, after this is where I decided to uh, take on full color because the last few years I was more focused on mon monochromatic or grayscale um, to understand the facial anatomy, I stand being light to shadow, but then I'm trying to, you know, take a study on uh, full color, the skin tone, and um, this is where I'm like, you know, I, this, I can be comfortable um, in 
understand that I can do things on a separate layer or I can do on the same layer, but it will take time to take on similar approach or doing different approaches. Uh, another one where, <clears throat> where I came back on doing grayscale and thinking of while uh, looking at the reference image. Um, again, not made by me, but the reference image of the person that was in the full color photo of the model. And I thought, you know what, I can just go back to great scale by just hand drawing the likeness of the, of the model. And by looking at the facial expression, I thought of draw the outline of an animal like a tiger because of the was well, more because of my decisions you know i have creative decisions um you know ask question what does look good or what's this um you know make a choice on whether i should just focus on portrait or do i want to include portraits of human and animals and relations with the facial expression I have another one uh, It's a leopard. So of course I use reference and Troy, but it's just more of a practices, uh, practice and just getting comfortable in learning ways to render them in three dimensional way rather than making it look very flat. Butterfly. Um, this piece is um, where I'm starting to, uh, again, trying to go back to learn more on skin tone. And after playing with that, I thought, you know, add something uh, for the background or anything to kind of make my own original, it's like original work, although still it's uh, a replica of the original uh, photograph that I see and try to draw from the photo and you know do something different. And this one is whenever I see an original or like a photograph of someone and I get this idea of another artist I guess I of claim it because of the the, the model or the person's you know, the facial expression, the cock of the head, and the way the clothing, there's a lot of wrinkles or there's a lot of ideas where I thought, you know, maybe I can do this and then take the concept from another artist. Mostly those are historical artists and replica of their concept. Flower. Um, this one is, again, this one's like my favorite um, because I took a lot of effort in, you know, to be confident in my work and, you know, just go for um, just because when I look at the original photo, I see there's a lot of details that I have to make sure I include there in my work, uh, in my poetry studies. So, I, you know, I went draw the flowers, I want to draw the hands, and it came out very, really great. So, and this one um, actually inspired other people who are interested in uh, sending a request or a commission, and they noticed my work that I've done, and they were, you know, they asked, you know, can you draw this person and include the flowers, and I can say yes, I can drawing in flowers, even though it's very difficult, but the more I practice and the more I can um, do similar subject matter or do similar style um, again in later in the future or before the commissions, if anyone going to ask me to uh, to make something, even it's difficult or complex because I want to be able to do this and as long as I have confidence for it. Last but not least, um, orange and yellow. Uh, 
although this one is not fully completed, it's more of a, like a working progress. Uh, but I'm really happy how they work, how they came out, and you know, using the texture from the paintbrushes and in pencils um, on the software, and I decided, you know, maybe I should do practice on uh, two portraits a day, uh, and you know, go back on for the left and go back for the right just to get comfortable and. You know, the more you do, the more you work on some things that you struggle with, and later on you see yourself, you're not going to be struggling on this uh, particular uh, lesson because you have practice on it and you're happy and you're comfortable with it. So this is the main point or reason why I would like to show everyone on portrait studies and a lot as well as my personal works in the senior art thesis um, so you kind of see why am i at as an artist again i have the uh, website where you will see not just the digital painting but i have done other media like photography, I've done traditional painting and drawings. Um, this is where I'm, you know, take on different things. And um, also you will see commission page. So again, if you're interested, um, you will go for that website. And thank you for watching. Thank you, Jalisa. That was really wonderful. And I particularly appreciate you uh, showing and explaining the creative process. If someone wanted to learn more about the technology, uh, what would you suggest? There's a thing about technology nowadays are very, you know, you have to choose which one you want to work with. You have to be comfortable with. Um, a lot of times they're very expensive, but it's best to to get something smaller like the rack, the rack and pen and tablet. Um, you can find them at Best Buy or the website, rack them and experiment with them. And for the hardware, like the computer or desktop, um, you gotta make sure you have a lot of space or storage for it because the software you go to download or install to the computer. Um, will take up so much of the space. So I would suggest find a software that's free. Um, you can find it online. Get something for free. Just learn the basics of it before you do anything that would be too difficult for you. So just, you know, transition or upgrade your digital tools by the time you're like confident with them. Okay, and are there um, a lot of differences between Photoshop and Clip Studio Paint Pro, uh, or are they do they serve different functions? How does what's a comparison, or is there? Um, I noticed there's a lot of differences between these two software. Um, for four years, while I was in a student at university, um, I used Photoshop. The very first part where I know is the where I learned from the basics from it because I took the graphic design and digital art and where I know it's you no know, very um uh, understandable for me. So when I transitioned to Clip Studio Paint, I know this very feel very familiar with Photoshop because of the layout of the workspace, you know, where the tools of the brushes are or where where I can find the colors are on the side of the screen or where I can find the layers. So there's not much of differences because the more you learn on one software and the other software, you know, I'm not going to be have a struggle with it. But Clip Studio Paint itself is more of artists who work around with that. We have animation, we have um, a lot of advanced features uh, different from Photoshop because Photoshop is mostly used for photo manipulation.
Okay. Oh, good. That's uh, very, very helpful. Um, and for pieces that you sell, do you uh, print them on a particular surface? Um, or do the people have a choice or? Um, for prints, uh, it can be put out on a variety of services. Um, even it's going to be on paper, poster, canvas. You know, there's a lot of like print on demand websites that can be printed on um, like stickers, mugs, and blankets and whatnot. But I have not like explored with that. So for me, if I were to sell prints, it would mostly be on posters, um, either being a smaller size or large scale. But I want to explore on um, printing out like anything. Okay. Uh, and you also mentioned um, one of your pieces was inspired by uh, Clem, and I think you might have mentioned uh, Rembrandt as well, and you mentioned uh, Disney movies and space. Are, are there any other inspirations uh, that you have for your work? Uh, where do you get these ideas and so forth? Yeah, I get inspired by historical artists because, you know, as the art history and I thought of, you know, mostly those who did portrait paintings and figure paintings where there's so much of uh, details and I get that inspiration from it along with media and personal experiences. Uh, but there are contemporary artists and painters that I've been inspired by um, named uh, Jihandi Wali because of these large scale portrait paintings of people mostly those who are of African descent. And I thought of, you know, take on that similar uh, concept of like drawing diverse people of different culture, um, whether it be around the world or whether it be in my community. And also there are digital painters I followed on social media because that's who I look up to as to like looking at their tutorials or looking at their time lapse or how they create their work. You know, I like watching uh, their creative process and not just to copy their style, but to take on similar approach that could be beneficial for me. Um, you know, that's a lot to, to be inspired by. Okay, good, good. Um, and what advice do you have for aspiring artists? There's a lot of advice, but the only thing I can say whenever you try to get a head start or when you try to start on something like digital painting, don't expect everything to come out really great because the very first try is not going to be something you expect. And so it's okay to continue. Um, you know, have a trial or trial and errors. It's okay to um, to practice more on something you struggle with, and you know, meet with artists, uh, other artists. Just have a conversation, follow their social media, and not just do just digital painting, but you can try to you know, traditional any media um, that you're comfortable with because um, you have to take a break from one thing, then you can work on something else that can be used as a knowledge or lessons or something like take on from your experience and then you can apply onto to another medium. Very good, yes. Perseverance, patience, and uh, communicating and getting advice from others, uh, all very excellent advice. Um, and what are your future plans or goals for your artwork? Well, I was thinking of, you know, just continue on the same, on this path that I'm doing right now, um, trying to explore more of something new, something like animation. Um, and I want like to take on bigger projects of like, cover art or album cover, um, you know, something, you know, be like a final career 
and doing what I like to do and might as well um, start making new illustrations to sell them as prints, you know, make this uh, hobby rather than just be a hobby, but into a career myself. Uh, so it's, I have a lot of time, but I have to be uh, conscious about what I'm doing. Excellent. Well, very good luck to you. And Jaleesa, thanks again very, very much for joining us today. And we hope that uh, all of you watching this will check out her websites. And be sure to join us again next month when a photographer, Scott Young, will be featuring his bird photography. So uh, thanks again to all.